If you've been paying attention to the gaming industry or have even just browsed YouTube in the past few years, you've probably noticed that footage of video games has become more and more ubiquitous on the internet. Among the top 100 most popular websites in the United States is now Twitch.tv, a site dedicated to live streams of users playing video games. In 2015, YouTube created an entire section of their site dedicated to gaming, and the single most subscribed individual on YouTube exclusively makes gaming videos. By the way, he's a 26-year-old from Sweden who goes by PewDiePie, and he makes an awful lot of money doing it too. Video games are no longer only being experienced firsthand by players. Rather, they're being shared with the world in the form of walkthroughs, speedruns, competitive exhibitions, reviews, and even just casual playthroughs with commentary called Let's Plays. Let's Plays? That's what they're called, dude. Get with the times. The impact that online game broadcasting has had on the business of the gaming industry is very evident. According to a recent Google study, 95% of gamers view YouTube videos related to their hobby, and these videos can affect how games perform commercially. It's not unusual for games to spike in sales after being featured on popular YouTube channels such as PewDiePie's. And in some cases, video coverage has put relatively obscure or unknown indie games at the top of download charts. Due to these positive effects on sales, game developers have generally been very supportive of people broadcasting their games, not requiring fees to be paid by broadcasters and seeing each YouTube video or Twitch stream as essentially free advertising. A very notable exception to this is Nintendo, who announced in May 2013 that they would claim all ad revenue for YouTube videos that featured their games. Due to massive backlash against their decision from fans, however, they've since set up programs that allow YouTubers to receive the majority of ad revenue if they register with Nintendo. Industry experts suggest that users who stream and create game videos may be more important for marketing a game than the game publishers are themselves. In an interview with The Telegraph, Xbox marketing director Harvey Eagle explained, We have to be where our community is, and we know that many are on the likes of YouTube and Twitch. So yes, this has influenced how we market our games. I would say the fundamental change it has driven is from a broadcast-led marketing approach to an influencer-led marketing approach. We have already seen success in this space. Web series Halo 4 Forward Unto Dawn debuted on YouTube and has had more than 55 million views. Developers like 343 Industries realize the potential of YouTube as a platform for growing their fan base, and are making big investments in it. Beyond a web series to promote Halo, Microsoft adapted to the YouTube and Twitch communities by implementing built-in sharing features on the Xbox One including a Twitch app and a game DVR that allows users to stream and record gameplay while playing. Sony's PlayStation 4 features similar built-in sharing features, and even Nintendo has recently supported game sharing by allowing users to upload their replays in games such as Mario Kart. Clearly, streaming and Let's Plays have had a profound impact on the performance and marketing of video games. But have they affected the way games are developed? According to game developer Mike Bithell, yes. When asked if he thought of YouTube during his creative process, Bithell replied, yeah. I think it would be pretty foolish to make a game nowadays without at least considering it. Though I don't think it should guide you, I make decisions in the game to make it fun to watch as well as it is to play. Things like the player's ability to make their own levels are as much about giving longevity to the players that buy it as it is about giving content to the YouTubers that want to stream it. Some of the most successful games in recent years have had a focus on user-generated content, such as Minecraft, Little Big Planet, and Super Mario Maker. These games' YouTube presence primarily features levels or worlds designed by players, and the developers of each have continued support for the games long after launch with content updates, often free, intended to keep players talking and making videos about the games. As Bithel explains, if you can make a game that has content moving forward that can keep bringing in an audience, as Minecraft shows, that can be an amazing thing. In some scenarios, game streams and videos have affected the way certain games are designed in ways that aren't necessarily positive. In June 2013, Super Smash Bros. director Masahiro Sakurai announced his decision not to include a story mode in the latest Smash Bros. game due to certain players uploading and spoiling the cutscenes from the previous game in the series, Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Rather, he decided to embrace the idea that all parts of games will be shared online and have animated movies with the game's characters produced and shared directly by Nintendo pre-release to serve as trailers for the game rather than in-game story content. The impact that streaming has had on game development is perhaps most apparent with esports, games that are competitive on a professional level. For many esports, streams of tournaments and competitive matches are the biggest way that they're marketed, and so the game developers are incentivized to follow and react to the streams. Professional Smite player Mace to the Face explains, 
Since Hyrus Studios has motivation to promote Smite as an esport, they make balance changes to the gods based on how they perform in pro matches. They even have monthly meetings with players from pro teams where pros give feedback on what balance or other changes they'd like to see added to the game. If Hi-Rez didn't stream these competitive games, they would have no incentive to do any of that. Sites like YouTube have expanded the way video games are experienced beyond streaming and commentaries. It's also allowed some players to use video games as a platform for creative storytelling. In Converging Media, authors John V. Pavlik and Sean McIntosh describe the recent prevalence of machinima, a whole new genre created by video game enthusiasts that takes cross-fertilization of games and the internet even further with 3D animated movies modeled after video gameplay scenarios and characters. Using game engines, YouTubers, including myself as a matter of fact, have created their own unique music videos, comedies, and even serious dramas. Though not as massively successful as Let's Plays, these videos have still garnered large popularity promoting and being promoted by the games off of which they're based. Some well-known machinima channels have even been officially recognized and promoted by game developers, such as Rooster Teeth's Red vs. Blue series created with the various Halo games. Perhaps the company to most positively embrace the machinima community is Valve, who released their own official Source Filmmaker in 2012, allowing users to more easily create their own movies in the Team Fortress 2 game engine. Nope. As video games have become more and more a part of mainstream culture, so have the YouTube and Twitch communities that have formed around games. Let's Plays and gaming personalities have become absolutely huge, especially among the younger generation. Trey Parker and Matt Stone satirized this trend in the 2014 South Park episode Hashtag Rehash, in which Kyle is disappointed to learn that younger kids are more interested in watching Let's Plays than actually playing games themselves. Hey Ike, look what I got! The new Call of Duty! You wanna go downstairs and play? Meh. You're watching someone play Call of Duty and talk about it? PewDiePie! The popularity of these kinds of videos may seem historically unconventional, but they represent the general trend of popular content being more and more created by consumers. As Neil Anderson explains in New Media and New Media Literacy, video games, and especially the internet, are much more user-controlled than other mediums. Many new media users create their own media messages by controlling the sequence and duration of their experiences. The game broadcasting community is certainly taking advantage of this creative freedom, and they're undoubtedly affecting many aspects of the gaming industry doing so. From changing the business and marketing of games to directly affecting the way some are developed, YouTube and Twitch communities have proven themselves to be greatly important to video games as a whole, and their presence in the industry seems to be growing and growing. Maybe this is all the beginning of a new art form. YouTube celebrities are only getting bigger. And what's great is that these people are inventing themselves instead of being marketed and shoved down our throats. Yeah, no matter what we think, it's not just a passing trend. We need to realize that the new generation of entertainment is here. And I think that's great. Yeah, I think that's great too. All right, bros, looks like we'll have to end it there. Stay awesome.